Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video I will be talking about paired samples, t-tests, and so I'm going to be using a data set that is uh, actually uh, um, included uh, in uh, the software JASP, uh, which is um, which is a data set where we have a number of uh, an average number of disruptive uh, events during uh, uh, for dementia patients during moon days and and non moon days. So that's the other uh, variable here. Um, I'm not sure it's a, it's an um, it's a, it's a it's a real data set. Uh, it's from a statistics textbook. Um, so here we have. Um, averages of events for the different cases in two different conditions, moon and other, so it's important to see that here we have pairs of observations. So that's why we will be using a paired samples t-test and not some other procedures such as uh, an independent sample t-test. How do we do this paired sample t-test? It's very simple, we will click on analyze, compare means, and paired samples t-test. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the two variables that we want to compare. So here uh, we will compare moon. So I'm going to drag and drop moon here in variable one. And I'm going to drag and drop other here. Uh, I could do it the other way around, but of course the, 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 the difference between the two would be in, in, um, in the opposite direction here. Um, by default, SPSS will do uh, variable 1 minus variable 2. So in this case, if I'm expecting more disruptive events uh, and during moon days, which is the case here, uh, uh, I would probably uh, choose to put moon as variable 1 and other as variable 2 so, that, so as to have moon minus other, so positive uh, difference, which is uh, maybe easier to, to, uh, to interpret or more straightforward. Um, another side note here, sometimes uh, this dialog box will bug in that you will not be able to click OK, such as here, actually. It might not be the case. If it's not the case, just click OK. But if it is the case, like here, uh, what you can do to solve this is just create a new, uh, put a new variable here. So for example, here I'm going to double click on other again, so that now I also have other here. And then I'm clicking on the on the on the box right next to it and now I can click OK so for some reason there's this bug that may show up um, uh, which you can uh, solve notably this way uh, there may be all other ways to solve it but uh, that's the way I have found and then I'm going to click on OK and it's going to ignore the second line I'm just going to uh, uh, just going to show me uh, the, the first um, um, differences uh, between moon and other here. So here you see you have the different means in the two conditions. We see that the moon of uh, the mean of moon is higher than the mean of other. Um, we have the standard deviations and standard errors of these means. We also have the correlation between uh, uh, the two variables, the two conditions, and uh, more importantly I have here um, the paired sample t-test. So here I have the mean difference or the mean of the differences, the standard deviation of these differences, the standard error of the mean of these differences, the confidence intervals of the difference uh, of, the, of the mean of the differences between uh, a moon and other, and finally I have a t-test, this is my paired sample t-test, so this is the t-value degrees of freedom and the p-value. So here the p-value is smaller than 0.05 so I will therefore conclude that I have a significant um, increase in disruptive events uh, during uh, moon days or significantly larger uh, number of um, disruptive events during uh, moon days. Just example conclusions here. Um, Another thing we might want to do is test the assumption of normality here. Uh, the assumption of normality in this case uh, is not about uh, the variable moon, it's not about the variable other, but it is about this variable which is the difference between moon and other, and that's the one thing that here should be normal in the population of course. Uh, so I'm going to have to actually to create a new variable that represents these differences, that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to click on transform, compute variable, let me reset that, and I'm going to create a new variable. First thing to do is to give a name to that variable. Let me call it difference, just an example. And then here 
I have to write a numeric expression for this variable. So here is just going to be the differences between moon and other. Just to be consistent, I'm going to choose the same order, so it's going to be moon minus other. So I can type it, moon minus other, or I can directly double click here. Moon, the minus sign, which I also find here, minus other, moon minus other. And of course, you can also type it. Uh, in, in this case, it's 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 uh, maybe easier to do that. Um, but you can also double click on the variables like here. Okay, now that it's done, I will click OK, and I will see a new variable showing up in my data set, which represents these differences. So here, 3.06, it's actually 3.33 minus 0.27. So here 3.06 and so I have now my variable, my vector of uh, differences and we see that uh, all of them are positive, ex positive except uh, this one over here. So the question is, um, is this vector different from zero and that's actually uh, what uh, the pair sample t-test does. It's actually um, similar to one sample t-test of that uh, variable that I've just created. Okay, um, so what we need to do now is to check normality of that new variable that I've created. So what I'm going to do is click on Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore, and Reset everything. And so I'm going to study just this variable, Difference, and note again I'm not studying these, I'm actually just studying this uh, new variable that I've created, Difference. And in the plot, so I'm going to click on plots. I'm actually going to uncheck the stem and leaf, but I'm going to check the histograms. It's a good way of assessing normality visually. And I'm going to check the normality plots with tests to have the Kolmogorov Smirnov test and the Lily Force test. Oh, uh, and the, yeah, the Lily Force test and also the Shapiro Wilk test. Clicking on continue and then OK. So here is the information about these uh, about these differences. Um, so um, we notably see here, if we're interested in normality, we see a skewness and kurtosis that uh, are um, within the bounds of minus one to plus one, so it seems okay. The histogram does not show a lot of uh, a lot of good signs of normality, but then again, it's a small sample, actually a very small sample. Um, and if we look, in fact, at the normality tests, uh, we see that the Kolmogorov smirnov test is non-significant, and also the Shapiro-Wilk test is non-significant as well. In other words, uh, here we can still retain uh, normality as a reasonable, um, as a plausible assumption, um, and, and, and therefore uh, we can use uh, the one, uh, the paired sample C test, like we like we did in this case. And well, really, that's it. So uh, thank you for watching this video.